Welcome to A Course in Miracles, where you'll discover health and well-being through inner peace. Your host is Eloisa Ramos, EFT, master and author of Beyond Self-Esteem, Discovering Your Boundless Self-Worth. Using EFT, the Ramos Clearing Technique, and the principles of A Course in Miracles, you'll learn how to open your mind to healing and to all that is inherently yours, deep fulfillment, vitality, joy, and inner peace. Welcome, everyone, to today's program. My name is Eloisa Ramos, and I'm very happy to have Gary Craig with us today. For those of you that don't know, Gary is the founder of EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques, but he is also an avid Course in Miracles student. And so today we're going to talk with him about A Course in Miracles, and he's also going to tell us about optimal or spiritual EFT. So thank you so much, Gary, for being with us today, and welcome. Glad to be here. Yeah, so maybe um, we we can start by um, just finding out a little bit about what attracted you to A Course in Miracles and uh, when you started, um, you know, uh, studying it. Um, well, it was nineteen. It was nineteen eighty six, and at the t- at that time, you know, I didn't have any specific spiritual leanings at all at all I do I wasn't didn't belong to any form of religion or anything like that and and I was running an investment business and one of the investment uh one of my investors died and his I got a call from the executor of his estate uh and said well we noticed his investment here and I as the executor said this person's name was Bob Scutch <clears throat> am uh interested in buying it, so let's have lunch. So he and I had lunch, and I said, what do you do, Bob? And he said, well, I run the foundation for inner peace. Oh. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll bite. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> and he says, well, we publish A Course in Miracles. I said, okay, I'll bite. What is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that was my introduction. Bob Bob was one of the first – Bob actually knew Helen Schuckman, who is the scribe for the course. And by the way – uh, Eloisa, I'm I'm assuming the people listening in are Course in Miracles students with that kind of a background. Would I be correct? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. Um, so they would know who Helen Schuckman is, the scribe, and so on. So anyway, he knew her personally, and, and, and he wrote a book called Journey Without Distance, an interesting title for a book, which was really the story of how the Course in Miracles got started. I, I took the book home and read it, and I was just fascinated so I went out and bought the course, and that started my journey. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, and and um, I know that when I started, um, it took me a while. I had the book for at least a year, and I would pick it up, and I would read a little bit, and I just put it down. I would read like a paragraph or two, and then I, I would just put it down. And it took me probably about four tries uh, to really – kind of commit to working with it. Did you find anything um, like that happening with you? <laughs> took me a lot longer than that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I would, I, I was, I was, uh, I was really enticed to read it because of what I'd read in Journey Without Distance, you know, and with, you know by my friend Bob. And well, I started reading it, and it got. It wasn't though the words were strange words to me. I mean, they weren't, they weren't using words I didn't understand, but I'd read I'd read like a paragraph, and then I'd say, well, what did I just read? And I'd go back and read it again. So, well, what did I just read, you know? And and oftentimes, I would even fall asleep. Mm-hmm. I'd put the book down, and I'd sit in the chair, and I'd just fall asleep. And I didn't know why that was, but at some level, uh, I was saying to myself, oh, well, I'm not understanding this. But at another level, it was like lyrical, magnificent melody. And I just didn't understand the lyrics yet, but the song, the song got to me. So I kept reading it and kept reading it. And eventually some things started to make sense. And then I started to underline things. And I'm, then I'm finding myself underlining just about every line in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and it really had me, but it took me several readings. And I'm still on my umpteenth reading of it and my umpteenth 
you know, tour through the the workbook lessons, and every time I do, it sinks in deeper and deeper and deeper. It's really a fascinating process for those who stay with it. Yes, yes, and I, I find the the same thing. Uh, I find that every time that I go through it, that that more of it seems to make sense, and like you said, it begins to uh, sink to a deeper level. Um, so, um, let's see. So, is there a connection between EFT and, and your study of A Course in Miracles? Was that something you were already doing when you started EFT or not? Uh, yes, I had already been been um, uh, using it and reading A Course in Miracles. That, that started around '86, and 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 I got introduced to to the foundations of EFT in the early '90s, and I eventually brought EFT out in 1995. So, but I didn't really put the two together at first. Okay, I was sort of new at both of them. And and of course, the miracles is more in the background because because EFT was um, much more useful within this illusory state of separated bodies that we think we're in that the course tells us about okay? uh-huh. within the dream, if you will, that is of course relates our experience to. But it was very helpful with, within the dream. I mean, people's headaches would go away. People's you know, post-traumatic stress disorder would just fade. Nightmares go away. I mean, we, were, we were doing things that, that you know, advanced psychology and, and many parts of medicine, et cetera, wish they could do. And we were doing it sometimes in, in moments without any kind of pills and drugs and surgeries. And it was really quite astonishing and still is for that matter. Um but what I wasn't recognizing in the early stages was that the real value of EFT, the longer term piece of it, isn't you know to give us what the course sometimes calls a better version of the dream. That is, you know, run around in this dream of separated bodies, but but uh, you know we we want to do it without our headaches and without our nightmares and so on. Right, <laughs> you know? right. So, so, but that just makes a better version of the dream. the the real The real goal, in my view, was to clear away to do what what is comes up in the very beginnings of a course in miracles. It says we want to remove the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. And EFT, although it's something built within the dream, a man made yes. thing within the dream. Yes. Is the only thing I know of. Maybe others. Others. The only one I know of, where we can take obvious blocks to the awareness of love's presence, and do away with them at least to a degree pretty quickly. For example, if someone is really angry at their abusive father, and all the abuses he may have done, you know, during childhood, uh, it's one thing to say, "Oh well, just forgive him." <laughs> No, yeah. That's so easy to say. You know? Right. But with EFT, you can actually go back to all those events where he was so abusive and deal with them in a manner so that you don't forget them, but the sting is gone. And it gets replaced with an understanding of where he must have come from himself to have been so abusive. Mm-hmm. And it, it moves us easier in the direction of forgiveness and so i began seeing that as the ultimate goal for this and i would say things like that years ago but it didn't go very far because people weren't really ready to hear that Mm -hmm. they seem to be readier now yes so i'm saying it more and more and we're developing something called optimal eft which is a way to use eft to remove those blocks to the awareness of love's presence even um, even more efficiently Yes. Okay. And do you think that it it, it would be helpful um, uh, to study a course in miracles, or not not even necessarily a course in miracles, but just to have a spiritual practice to be able to um, to work with optimal EFT? Well, I'm going to be using. Um, well, let me back up a second. Optimal EFT basically is is my spiritual. It's my way to get back to 
a um, uh, a revelation. The, uh, the course the course calls it a revelation. Sometimes a holy instant. Or, I mean, there's a distinction between the two. But I think mine was a revelation that I had in 1988. I mean, it was really a stunning. I was just in the presence of the Creator, and and it's it's just the most exquisite thing. There's no time in it. There's no space in it. There's no bodies in it. You know, it's just this this state. You know, that that is nothing but bliss and love and caring and all of that and. I am convinced that if I could get back to that state, which happened for me momentarily, but if I could get back to that state and maintain it, um, that I or anybody else who was able to do that could walk into a hospital and your mere presence, just your presence, would be this pure love emanating from you, that that healing power itself would start to shrink tumors and make lungs work better and... (laughs) Make, make livers work better and, 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 and cure many of the ailments there. I'm convinced that would happen. I'm not there yet. I'd love to get there. Um, even if I don't get there, optimal EFT is a way to approach that, and even that approach is stunning. So I don't know if I answered your question. I got, I got kind of waylaid there, but how did I do? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. And, and I think it reminds me uh, of just... Um you know, the spiritual path itself. And I think that we don't have to come from a particular um, uh, spiritual religion or perspective because I think that that the way, um, uh, what what we're all kind of aiming for is the same thing. And it is this this state that you uh, spoke about. Yes, and and, and that's how I I did last lose track of your first question. Um, I'm using A Course in Miracles as my path. Um, and that's what optimal EFT is going to be about. But I, I'm the last one to say my path should be your path. A Course in Miracles is not a path for everyone. Even the Course in Miracles says that. Yes. Okay. Um, but So I put it forward as a pursuit, as you put it, of this state. However you get there is immaterial to me. <laughs> yes. I, I just want everybody to get there. Yes. And and I'm going to... Sh- I'm, I'm going to display my path, and so you can borrow from it, you can reject it, you can adopt it totally, uh, whatever you want. It's going to be my addition to to your to your path, and I'm I think I'm going to open a lot of doors with it. Yes, and 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 in the end, that's all that we can really do because that that is our experience, and so the only thing that we can do is share share that. Sure. Um, and um so i um it, it reminded me uh let's see when you were talking um uh and, and it's interesting because you're calling uh calling it optimal eft but um one of the things that i realized when i first uh, was introduced to eft and i started using it for a while i first started using it to really help my children who had allergies and asthma but because i had um started um questioning uh, my beliefs way back in uh, college um i discovered that eft has this amazing um um i i i think what it what it did was it was actually focusing my attention and my intention on on that inner world and on on being able to observe what is happening um when I'm upset and when I'm tapping and how is that releasing and how are those um, uh, thoughts, what are those beliefs and thoughts that are there um, that are that are bringing up all these negative emotions. And so um, I think that from the very beginning, I really valued um, EFT because of what it could help, uh, uh, of, the, of the great benefit and value it had for me um, in releasing a lot of um, these, um, let's see, non-serving beliefs that I would come across. And and I found it so useful when I started uh, reading A Course in Miracles because I would notice that resistance after I read something. And I would, I would feel that resistance in my body and I would start tapping. Um, and so... Um, what do you um do you, what do you is that what you're kind of aiming for with the with the optimal EFT? Um well you said quite a few things there so I um 
Be more specific. What I'm aiming. For. Well, well, what I'm saying is that in our path, for those of the for those of us that that um, have kind of recognized that, um, and for me, it, it started in college when I realized that 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 self that I wanted to be was was actually just a mask. It wasn't my true self. Um, so it started me on this path of questioning. Well, you know, do do I want to is is that what I really want to do? Do I want to be an engineer, or, or is that kind of like what I got uh, kind of advice to do, to do? Um, and as I started questioning uh, all those beliefs, I started questioning this sense of of self that I had believed myself to be, um, or that I believed I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, and when I started doing that, I realized that. Um, uh, that there were there were a lot of beliefs that weren't actually mine that I had just accepted um, uh, just because that's what children do they accept you sure. know uh, what they're taught in belief. school yeah and so what I found in finding in trying to find that authentic self within me I think I think that I. I I realized that EFT was was that tool that could remove those blocks. You you call them blocks to the um, awareness of the presence of God, and and I guess I would call them uh, blocks to the awareness of our true self, our higher self, well, which and, is the and same that thing. Work, yeah, that would work. That would work as well. I, one of the things that just kept building over time is is um, I, when I first started doing this, I was doing little workshops and we would take care of phobias pretty quickly for a lot of people and that you know that's the kind of thing that conventional therapy would take weeks months or years to maybe do something with and we were often doing it in minutes or a session or two you know so yeah uh, and and poof gone and you know people go on the top of buildings or getting water or whatever the case may be and they used to be panicked and no more you know but what was really fascinating about that to me is as we were doing that People kept, we were taking care of their emotional issues, phobias being one, but then we got into not just fear, which is what a phobia is, but into, into trauma and anger and guilt. And it was it was equally useful for all of these emotions. And as we were doing that, people kept reporting to me, gee, my headaches are gone. Gee, my lower back pain, this is hardly ever there anymore. Uh, gee, my multiple cirrhosis symptoms just seem to be fading now. Uh, gee, my swollen feet from lupus aren't swollen anymore. I kept getting all these these physical healings because we were addressing emotional things, and and so that just that just expanded the use of EFT um, masterfully and magically. What do you want to call that? Because now we are addressing. What I think is one of the major causes of all of our diseases, that is, unresolved emotional issues. And it's one that the medical profession speaks about a lot. You know, they they, they tend to call it stress. You know, stress tends to cause these things and so on or be one of the causes. But they don't know what to do about it. And we now have something, a way to do about it. But then the step from there when you get into the Course in Miracles and spiritual things is, well, okay, so... So if I'm angry at somebody and that is causing me, you know, some physical ailments, you know, an ulcer or something, um, uh, gee, what, what's, what's behind all these various emotions? And now you start to look at spiritual foundations. And when, if you have that kind of experience I had where I was in the presence of a creator in 1988, you suddenly realize because that state is nothing but peace. I mean, the idea of trauma and fear and anger and guilt and all of that are impossible. If, if there were words in that state, you know, that would not be part of the vocabulary because they were just impossible states. It would be impossible to be angry there, et cetera. Yes. So we want to see if we can't get to that state. I've been there. I know what it's like. I, I, have, I have interviewed many, many people, which will eventually be on our website, who have also been there momentarily. We want to get back to that state, or if we can't get to it in the ultimate sense, at least approach it. And when we get there, our, our abilities to heal now are, are well 
well beyond anything EFT can do, even though it's quite magical in its results. Anything medicine can do and any other man-made you know, method that you might run into. So that's a long answer to your question, but... No, 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 that's great because because it's pointing to what uh of course in Miracle says is that there is only one problem which is separation. Yes. Um yeah. It, yeah, and so the 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 healing of the mind that the course in Miracles talks about is is that recognition where uh we are no longer seeing ourselves as separate but rather as one. Um and that's where the um the piece about forgiveness comes in because uh, then it's not really about forgiving the other. It's really about recognizing that um, what what we're giving to others is real. You know, we're receiving because it's th- there is no other. It's all that one. It's all that oneness, and and we are actually healing our mind when we're doing that. Yes, and and getting to the well. Let me get back to say I I, I love what you said about there's only one problem and that separation. And and that is true. That simplifies everything. In, in, in effect, if you study quantum physics, one of the conclusions there that is said over and over and over again, you'll find words to the effect on my website f- for this, is that separation is the only problem we have. It's an illusion. We aren't really separate bodies, you know, trying to compete with each other, <laughs> you know, that deteriorate and and die, you know, it, it, that's that's an illusion. Mm-hmm. The course points that out. Our our most pristine science, quantum physics, now points it out quite clearly. I mean, there, I, there may be maybe somebody a quantum physicist disagrees with that, but they would be the one percent. I think <laughs> just about everybody is into that, you know. Right. And then if there's only one problem. And this isn't just for our health, it's for our political things, our starvation, our hunger, our every every man-made problem there is. If separation is the only problem, then the recognition that we are all one, I mean the true buying into that, and if you will, going home in coarse terms, um, that is the only solution. Um, you have one problem, you have one remedy. Mm-hmm. And the remedy it gives is forgiveness, which you pointed out. But it def- forgiveness, let me just stop here a second and ask you. Forgiveness is defined differently by the Course in Miracles than it is by our standard everyday use of that term. Are you familiar with that? Um, well, I, off the top of my head, I, I don't remember the... The definition, but I, but I know that um, in my personal experience, I I had a very uh, I did I did not really know what forgiveness was, but as but but as I have worked with um, with EFT and as I see how the process works, where we go in and we release these these blocks that are there, it, it seems to me that it's the it's, it's fundamentally it's the release of the judgment. Um, uh, because if there was no judgment, there would be nothing to forgive. Um, so I I see it as as a letting go of that which we have judged. Um, uh, let's see, as um, as having done us wrong. Because because in fact that's not really um, possible. We are not um, uh, well one because we're not separate, but but also because. Um, because the mind is causal, and, and therefore um, we are doing it to ourselves, you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't I don't remember exactly how the the course in in miracles defines it, but but I know that it is different because it it acknowledges that um, that that nothing really happened, even though it feels like yes we were done wrong. Once we're done clearing all the anger and all the emotions, we can actually see that no, that actually that person actually was not trying to hurt us. They were not trying to get in our way. They were they were just going about the you know their life in the best way that they could. Um, so yes, the the um, the the link that I think is really most useful from the course to to the forgiveness idea is the same link that has to do with the fact that this 
running around in these separate bodies, this illusion, if you will, is a dream. And it's just like a dream that you have at night that you're used to in a dream. You know, when you have that dream, why all of reality seems to be shifted. You know, like you're at one moment you're having, you're playing bridge with some famous person, and the next moment you're in a parachute over Japan, and you yeah. think nothing, you think nothing about that. That's very real to you while it's happening. It's extremely real, okay? Mm-hmm. But when you wake up, you go, "Oh, gee, that was just a dream." And so that dream has no impact on you. And if in that dream you did something that would that would uh, cause you to have some guilt ordinarily, mm-hmm. or if somebody betrayed you or something, it's something you couldn't forgive, et cetera, you wake up, you go, oh, well, that was just a dream, you know. That's right. <laughs> you know, you walk right by it. So the definition of forgiveness then involves the idea of recognizing, and not just academically, but owning the idea that this is a dream and all these things never really happened. Somebody may have betrayed you or stolen money from you or something like that and you're angry at them, but then they, you know, they apologize and you say, oh, well, okay, I forgive you and you go about your life, you know, and that's, that's what we think forgiveness is. But that's not really true. That person does something else to you and you're going to say, now, that's the second time you've done this. Uh-huh. You didn't forgive the first one. You're still keeping score. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and there's a difference in there. And it's a big difference. And EFT, as most people know it, will take, will, will, will move us towards this element of forgiveness that I mentioned earlier. Somebody steals from you, you forgive them all as well kind of thing, but you're keeping score. Optimal EFT goes a step further. It aims us towards the recognition that this is really is a dream and there is indeed nothing to forgive. Everybody is either exhibiting love or calling for it. Very important topic in the course. Yes, yes. Um, yes, and I, I can really um, relate to that because um, as, as I tap um, on myself and... Um, what what I have begun to notice, and um, because I ask myself whenever I feel like oh you know someone um, hurt me, I began to, and I try to do that with um, with clients also those those that are um, uh, that that are able to to notice um, exactly what was it that that is feeling that hurt because. Um, if we go into the hurt, a lot of times what's being hurt is really our pride. It's really our sense of um, of honor, or it's really a um, a cherished belief or something. It's it's not actually it's not actually us in the sense of uh, our true our true spiritual self, because that that self obviously uh, the dream has no effect on on. Um, on that self, but it's this other self that that the course refers to as the ego self, um, that is actually the one that is feeling and believing and holding all these um, these hurts. And so I can I can understand what you're saying that the forgiveness involves um, the recognition that it is a dream because when we disidentify ourselves from from our pride and from our ego, um, then then that is not us it has not really happened and incidentally when you do that and for the brief times that i've been able to do that that is true freedom yes you know i mean it is you are really free when you're free of all of the resentments you have and the you know the all the things you're trying to do to make sure your life works well and the financial stuff you've got to do and make sure this person doesn't doesn't get ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. All, all this stuff that just goes on and on and on. And make sure your kids are raised right and they don't get in with the wrong crowd. And It just goes on forever. It just goes on forever. But once you are free of that, there's a freedom there that is just untouchable. Yes. Yes. And I've been free of that a few times and briefly. Um, uh, and I, you know, I keep trying to get back there and so... So that's what optimal EFT is about. It's my efforts to get back there, and I'm getting better and better at it, you know, so yeah. people can borrow. I want to mention one thing. A lot of people say, well, gee, uh, 
you know, if you let go of all these resentments and all these other conditionings you've had, et cetera, doesn't that just make you kind of like a Pollyanna and everybody's going to steal from you and take advantage of you and <laughs> you'll be destitute in no time and this world won't work for you, et cetera? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's a that's a that's a, a valid question. So, but the the answer to that is is yes, for now. For now you are in this world. You are in this dream. You you still have to comply with its laws and rules. Gravity is not going to go away so long as you're in the dream. So so be be careful where you walk and don't fall, okay? Mm-hmm, yeah. And and you know disease is going to happen and somebody's going to do you in and you got to stop at the stop sign, or you'll get a ticket, and all that stuff. Okay, so all that all that occurs. But once you've waded into um, that other state, you recognize the freedom in that state. That doesn't mean you don't you don't comply with rules and use common sense within the dream. I mean, I mean, you can recognize a pedophile, for example, as being someone who really needs help someone who is calling for love in their own way but you know I can do that and be and see things much differently but I'm not about to have them have a pedophile babysit my grandchildren so that's just a practical kind of thing so it's a it's a movement in that direction but it's done with you know with common sense within the dream Yes, and I and I think that in that situation, you're you're recognizing that the the person's behavior is there um, uh, for for a reason, and that they are not their behavior, and so therefore you still recognize that that pattern and that behavior, um, you know, can still show up. But that does not mean that um, uh, that they are not that they are somehow um, that that behavior somehow um with excludes them from the love of God. Right. Yeah, and and you know this in some way the kind of conversation we're having other people have a lot of times about spiritual things and you know look at somebody differently and, and this kind of thing like we're talking about now. And and I found over time that all those conversations are really good conversations. I mean they lead in the right directions and so on. But they tend to be more academic than real. So how do you really do what we just said? I mean, how do you really let go of resentments and cautions and one thing and another? And and how how closely can you get to this other state with all these other burdens hanging on, hanging on? Yeah. And that's where I think EFT comes in so beautifully because it is it is such a such an efficient way to deal with these things, especially when you get very specific with the features of EFT. You know, get down to very specific events and specific emotions within specific events and so on. Yes. I mean, you can you can really, like a surgeon, get in there and take that tumor out, you know. Um, and, and so that's the difference. It, we can, with EFT, the proper use of EFT, um, we can make this academic discussion into one that really has teeth in it and works for people. Oh yes, definitely. Um, and uh, and I think that if people really um, uh, apply it and try to apply it, um, let's see, um, with the um, with, with the intention that uh, that that what we're doing is we're trying to get to that place, like you said, uh, because all this stuff is is in the end. Um, even though it feels real, in the in the end, it's it's not real. Um, I I think that I think that that carries people. Um, the intention itself uh, helps helps to get there. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. And the paths the paths are different. And you know, some people get to that path by. You know, meditation, you know, others take drugs, you know, and others are silent for long periods of time, and they have all these different rituals to do to get there. And, and um, uh, you know, they'll tend to get there because the intention is there. It's my experience and my bias, if you will, that if they used EFT, un- first of all, understand how to use it well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's lots of, 
I mean, hundreds of EFT lookalikes out there, spin-offs, if you will, that don't necessarily do it well. So I would I would urge people to use our Gold Standard tutorial because that's 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 the foundation underneath optimal EFT and is doing it really really well. So I would I would urge that. So if you really really use it well, very well, um, then I think we can accelerate all these all these other efforts at um, enlightenment, if you will. Yes, and one of the things that really attracted me to EFT um, was. Um, uh well because when i first started i was actually considering um uh doing hypnotherapy and i i had started one of the classes um and what i realized was that in hypnotherapy you you work with a a negative belief of course that's you know uh, a problem for you but 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 then you have to go in and um install a, a replacement for it a positive one and um and that was one of the things that I had a, a little bit of a problem because uh, because I did not um, necessarily want to go in and put in another belief. It was like, why? It's it's all programming that I'm trying to release and clear. So I, I, I understand that um, for a lot of us, we want to um, we want to feel better. And yes. Uh, Releasing, turning that memory, a negative memory, into a positive one is, is certainly feeling better. Or replacing that negative belief with a positive belief is, is certainly going to make us feel better. But but in the end, it's it's the memory itself is not real anymore. So why would we want to keep uh, a memory that's not real, even if it's positive? It's we're still not getting to at least for me. I wanted to get to 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 the to the truth fundamentally of what I am and and so that was one of the things that really attracted me to EFT and it was um you know your statements um to that effect about how the blue sky is already there the clouds just need to be cleared um so we don't need to make the clouds prettier uh, you could say right we just right. need to clear them well yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I made a couple of little notes while you were talking about. One had to do with the idea of beliefs, and the other had to do with installing things. So, so let me let me respond to what you just said because that's going to be very helpful to the EFTers out there. Um, one of the principal things of EFT is we we aim it always at the negative because what we're trying to do is clear the negative out of there. Okay, mm-hmm. and and sort of conventional therapy oftentimes like to put in lots of positives, you know, positive affirmations and this, that, and the other thing. And all that is feel good, et cetera. And I'm not saying it doesn't have any value and and all of that, but that's not what EFT does. We think it's far more efficient to aim right at what is the problem. Let's aim right at it, be very efficient with it, uh, uh, very specific with it, and let's dig it out by the roots. And that we can do with EFT if it's done if it's done well. We do not, and this is important to emphasize, we do not want to install anything. Now, now there are there are there's debates going on on this. I'll just tell you my side of that debate. <laughs> the reason I don't want to install is something like what you were just talking about, but I say it in different words, and that is. Our true nature, and this gets back to the Course in Miracles, our true nature is nothing but joy and bliss and beauty. We have covered it over with lots of beliefs and negativity and resentments and betrayals and angers and guilt. and All, all this stuff, okay, is covering it over. And so what I want to do is get rid of the cover. Like you say, get rid of the clouds so the sky can show through, okay? Um, and so I want to get, get rid of the cover and, and let our natural joyous self bubble up to the top. And and I think that's much healthier than trying to install something else. When you try to install something else, whoever is doing the installing has to come from their own belief system someplace. And who's to say that your belief or my belief is the right thing to install in somebody else? You know? Yes, 
<laughs> yes, and that's a little and, arrogant if you come right down to it. <laughs> yes, and and even when we um, try to install our own beliefs, um, I think that 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 in itself is a little bit arrogant because um, yeah, how can we improve upon what um, God has created? Yeah, we might we we may want to put in some new belief like. You know, like I earn a million dollars a month. Okay, that's my new belief. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you're not really earning a million dollars a month. You're earning something less than that. You know, and so it's kind of out there a ways. But you know, in order to really install that, well, maybe you can install that, and maybe you can make some more money, et cetera. I I don't know what else you may be you may be conflicting with in your belief system when you do that. It's, it's, you know, exactly. I'd rather, I'd rather have it just kind of bubble up like it should be. But the other thing I'm going to talk about it had to do with beliefs. Um, a lot of people use EFT for beliefs. A belief would be like, a belief might be, I'm not lovable. Okay, And they will do tapping. They'll start the tapping process off by, off by saying, even though I'm not lovable, and they'll start tapping on their various points and, and so on. But that belief, uh, most beliefs like that one, are very general, very global type things. The reason that belief is there is because there are specific events in one li- in one's life that give rise to the belief that they're not lovable. When they were three, they were rejected by somebody, and when they were four, their father did this, that, or the other thing, and they felt rejected by that. And aren't, These are all specific events yes. that underlie the belief so we want to take EFT and aim it at the specific events that are causing the belief mm-hmm. and get rid of those, knock them out of the way, which we can do if we're using EFT well. And once those are knocked out of the way, then that belief starts to, the I'm not lovable belief starts to fade and it, it has less and less of a burden and, and the more I'm... The I'm the I am lovable type joyous piece starts to bubble up in its own way for you. Yes. You know, so anyway, I just yes. wanted to emphasize that. Yes, definitely. I um I I definitely agree with that. And of course when we do work uh with beliefs and, and with clients, those um those associated uh events will just come up because they're they're connected. They're connected to the belief. Um, but the other thing that I, I see also is that in order to have had that that event um, be traumatic for us, we we must have already had, or we or we concluded we made those beliefs in that moment, or we must have already had some beliefs to uh, have interpreted that event in that particular way. So um, so I also kind of I also um, uh, I also see that the traumas themselves are the result of the existing beliefs. Uh, I don't know if that made sense, but well, um, those aren't, aren't the words I would use. But let me give you an example there, and then you can tell me if this fits or not. Because I think it's worthwhile discussing here for the audience. Um, I've dealt a lot with our war veterans with their post-traumatic stress disorder (PTSD). Mm-hmm. A lot. And we have been able to make major headway, major progress with these fellows. The vast majority of them, their nightmares just aren't there anymore. They don't wake up at night swinging their fists and sweating, and they're not irritable and have anger outbursts. And I mean, they've become normal citizens again. Um, one of the things I've discovered, and this is along with sort of like what you were talking about a moment ago, is that if I take two veterans, side by side, both of them having had the same experience. They were they both witnessed the same helicopter crash, let's say. Yes. Um, and they both had they both had that and they were standing side by side so they saw exactly the same thing. One of them will end up having post traumatic stress disorder. PTSD yes. over that experience. The other one will not. The other one will say, well, you can talk about it. They'll say, well, yeah, I got to get stand. I mean, all those bodies and screams and everything else, you know. But they don't have nightmares about it. They don't. It's just not a just a memory they don't really like. Okay. Right. 
Whereas the other one goes off the deep end, you know, becomes suicidal in all the things we read about in the papers and I've seen one-on-one with all too many. The difference between those two almost invariably is that the one who had the PTSD had a very difficult, traumatic, abusive childhood, at least compared to the one who didn't have that much of a problem with it. Ah, uh, okay. And so when they when they are in these in the war theater and and experiencing all these things, it bounces off of a lot of very unresolved angers and guilts and all kinds of things clear back into childhood. Yes. And that's what that's what tends to kick it off into PTSDville, if you will. Oh, okay. And so so oftentimes, you know, to do a job well with our veteran, I've got to go back to their childhood. Yes. You know. We can still do a lot just with the war, but to really get it done, I've got to go back to these original abuses. Yes. And that that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Uh because that experience then is basically re triggering uh what's already all the pain that's already there. Yeah, it's adding to it and everything yes. else. Yes. Okay, that that um, yeah, that's very helpful. Okay, so um, Gary, let's see, um, let's see. As far as the Course in Miracles um, goes now, um, let's see. What, let's see. Would you would you say that that was connected to your experience that you had, or was that even before you knew about? Um, of course, America. The experience you had of being in the presence of God was that connected to your study, or was that before? You know, I don't know. Um, uh, I started reading of Course in Miracles in 1986, and this particular thing happened in 1988. And I would read in the Course in Miracles about this thing called a holy instant, and I really wasn't sure what that was, uh, but I remember saying to myself along the way. Well, okay, I've been reading the course here and done a few of these workbook lessons. Where's my holy instant? You know, come on, come on. (laughs) (laughs) I'm doing the job here. Here, reward me, will you? (laughs) And But that isn't the way it works, okay? The course in its own way says it in many ways, but uh, my summary is you've got to get yourself out of the way. You've got to get, you know, you've got to see beyond all all this, something they call, the course calls vision, which isn't using your eyes. Okay, it's another, another another form of vision. So, but when it, when it when it actually happened, I don't know if some of my readings in the course had had helped to spur it. Uh, what had actually happened was I was just waking up one morning, and I I had piled upon myself this list of things to do that I, mean, I just tend to do this sometimes. You know? Yeah, I get very responsible, so I promise a lot of things, lots of people, and. So I got. I was going over this in the, in the morning when I was waking up. I was still in bed, and I was just. I was so frustrated with myself and the world, and I just. I just basically said, "Who needs this?" But it wasn't just like an academic who needs this. I really meant it. It wasn't a suicide thought. It's just what a ridiculous world, and what am I doing here? And who needs this? Okay. Yeah. And at yeah. that moment important phrase here, at least for me, is I let go of this world. Yes. And and what just came flooding in was this 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 beautiful sense, this exquisite sense of love and there was nothing but love. How do you explain that to somebody when there's nothing but love? How do you explain what that's like? Because unless somebody's been there, it's just all they can do is just sort of Sort of it's something like trying to grasp what infinity is. Exactly. You know? <laughs> you yeah. Um, and so, but but there it was, and I remember saying to myself, "Well, I'm staying here." <laughs> 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 you know. And for whatever the reason, and I don't even know how long I was there because there's no such thing as time in that experience. There's only like this now. Um, I came back. And it it just colored my life for everything I've done since. And I've been trying to get back there. Yes. And uh, I've had little glimpses here and there, but I'm I'm giving it a real quality effort with my optimal EFT, and we'll see what happens. 
Yes, and and that that uh, reminds me of a couple of the lessons. Um, let's see, beyond this world, there is a world I want. Lesson one twenty nine. Yeah. 129. yeah. Um, and so I I really really appreciate having you with us today, Gary. Um, thank you so much for all your insight, and of course, thank you for for EFT and all the wonderful work that um, you are doing and offering. Um, to the world, so. Well, and thank you for this for this opportunity. I mean, some of the questions you asked, I think, are just and topics you brought up. I think we're just just right on. You know, I haven't had this kind of an opportunity for quite a while, so I hope a lot of people listen and and benefit by it. Oh, I, I'm sure, I'm sure that that they will. And so, you know, keep um, inspiring us with everything that you say and you do. And um, okay. Yes. Let me interject one thing. I, I have I have to be a bit of a commercial salesman. Uh-huh. We should at least give them my 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 uh, website address, shouldn't we? Oh, absolutely, definitely. www dot emo free. That's that's short for emotional freedom. E M O F R E E dot com. Emo free dot com. Great. That's the, our tutorial is there. It's free. There's other stuff there. God bless you all. So happy to join you. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. For more information about EFT, muscle testing, working with Eloisa, and to download a free version of the Ramos Clearing Technique, visit www.healingwitheft.com.